Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about key squares. Alright, continuing our lessons in the ending. What are key squares? Simply put, key squares are squares that, if occupied by uh, the king, so for instance, these squares right here in front of this pawn, then you would be able to achieve a forced promotion. And the thing to, to know about key squares is that if uh, the pawn is um, on its own side of the board, so for instance, um, if you're white, your side of the board consists of one, two, three, and um, uh, fourth ranks, right? Then the um, the critical, uh, excuse me, the key squares, or you only have three of them. So in this case. The critical, the key squares uh, for the e2 pawn would be d4, e4, and f4. So, for instance, with white to move, all he has to do is get to one of these key squares. So, let's just make some hypothetical moves. And he could go there or there, and it would be okay. So, for instance, let's say. Uh, white went there, here, here. So once he achieved, he got into that uh, key square. Of course, black would be compelled to move, and he would be able to um, keep continue to promote this pawn by force. Now, let's say the pawn, let's just make some arbitrary moves here. Now the pawn has crossed the imaginary borderline into black's territory, and now these are all key squares. Now the pawn has six key squares. So remember that once the and this goes and falls in line with Nemzovich's uh, statement that, um, you know, in, in statements in general, chess theory that pawns become more dangerous as they advance up the board. So once the pawns cross over into the enemy territory, they now have six uh, key squares instead of um, three. So pawn right here on the um, fourth rank would just have the uh, key squares right and and remember too they were separated here by um, you know as long as they're on your side of the board you have that separation here between the uh, fifth fourth and uh, sixth ranks these would be your key squares okay not not the ones on the fifth rank so let me put the pawn back so for instance right here the key squares are not on the third rank, not these. But these. Okay? So just remember that. Now, let's make some bad moves. Once the pawn gets to the fifth rank, now in enemy territory, these become the critical excuse me, the key squares. So if white is able to occupy any of these squares, then he can push this pawn. He can promote this pawn. Now in this position, uh, if black plays correctly, he'll be able to hold uh, white back. So for instance, <clears throat> a king e2, and let's, let's see here. Here, 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 and remember these are the critical squares here, and this is why the opposition is so important, and that's another video altogether we'll talk about opposition, but you can't really avoid it. then you just see 
black just simply blocking white out of getting into these uh, key squares <clears throat> and many uh, many games have been saved by this simple knowledge and when you understand the concept of uh, key squares you'll be able to look at a position and tell if it's drawn a draw or a win for uh, either side right away so for example this this is a win for white there's no there's there, because all you have to do is recognize where the key squares are and ask yourself can white get to them so once you know that then you can um, easily determine <clears throat> you can easily determine uh, if you know if the pawn if it, uh, the pawn can be promoted or not so you glance at the, this position you know where those key uh, squares are and you can know that you gotta win and also knowing about key squares keeps you from doing silly moves like e4 and leaving the king way back here because now once you did e4 here's the key squares now do you think that white can get to those squares of course not not with correct play now black simply <clears throat> let's just simply um, hold white up remember the key squares are right here so black armed with that knowledge also can play the best defense okay so now that you understand what key what key squares are and again it's it's the same way with black so if the position was reversed and say there was a pawn here for black the key squares would be right there for black so it's the same thing okay so now you know what key squares are we're gonna look at some examples so hold tight all right now I almost forgot about the rooks pawns I was getting ready to get into the examples I wanted to I almost forgot <laughs> but um these squares I have marked in red these are the key squares of the rook pawns and the re and the thing about the the rook pawns it doesn't matter how far the uh, pawns are advanced so those will always be the key squares the ones on the right of course are the uh, key squares for black and the ones on the left over here are the key uh, squares for white so again the same thing rule applies if the black king was able to occupy here or here the pawn promotes and, the, and of course um, I mean that guy back of course with the white king would try to stop him from doing that okay so these are fixed so unlike the um, the other pawns where the key squares will change depending on the uh, pawn crossing the um, into the enemy territory so to speak the um, pawns in the A and H files or the rook pawns always uh, have the same uh, key squares so keep that keep that in mind also all right so here's one example here's the f a first example it's like a random example now white to move and you have to calculate um can white win you know that's that's the basic um you know the basic question can white win now your first step is first of all where are the key squares located that's your first step and once you find out where they are, then you ask yourself, well, can I get to one of them? So you either calculate if you can get to one of them or you can't. And that's the difference between the win and draw. So let's let's follow this um, right now. Let's just follow the logic. So first of all, these are your key squares. So the king, right, the white king, the stronger side, has to be able to occupy one of those three squares it doesn't matter which one in order to win the game for black to draw he has to be able to stop white from 
getting to one of those uh, key squares. So here's white to move. Now, I don't know about you, but looking at this position, my goal would be to try to get to the square that's farthest away from my opponent. But any one will do, but I would go for that one first. So let's look look at it. So king c2, king e7, remember these are the squares, king b3, king d6, again, keeping an eye on that, king a4, king c6. So we see black is um, trying to stop white from getting to the key squares. Okay. So king, um, king c6 is played. And I just want to uh, go back because this is critical. King a4 is a very important move here. Because remember, these are the critical squares. So if white made the mistake and went king c4, king c6. And guess what? There's no way for white to get to the key squares. And forgive me if I say critical because critical squares are something different, which I will address in another video. I mean to say key squares. Some people use them interchangeably, but key squares is a word that we want that we want to stick with. So king c6, right, would stop white from getting to these key squares. This is why after king d6, king a4 is important because black, excuse me, white still has access to the key squares. So after king c6, king a5, again, I've uh, talked about this long enough and now you know exactly where white wants to go is the a6 square therefore there's only one move to calculate because any other move will win that's king b7 okay so these are the key squares once again and I've been highlighting them on you know I keep highlighting them so you can get the get the gist Okay, and some of you have gotten it already, and that's fantastic. So, king b7 is played. So, now what do we do to get access? Remember, we only need one square. One of those uh, three, three key squares. White simply plays king b5. There's your opposition, and guess what? Black is forced to move. So, either way he moves, white will gain access to one of these uh, key squares so for example black goes to king uh, black brings his king to c7 white jumps there to a6 if black goes the other way to a7 white gains access to the c6 critical square Okay, and so now we see that that is a win. So just looking at the position, at a quick glance, sometimes you can't tell right away, but maybe at the minute, 30 seconds start, you'll analyze that you can get to the um, A6 square, and then you know that you'll be able to win the game. All right, so now... Let's look at some examples, and this time there will be um, there will be no hints, no no um, no red um, colored boxes to help you. And just one more time before I go into the examples, I just wanted to summarize uh, again: the red boxes highlight where the critical squares are for these um these pawns and notice the two pawns on um e2 and b4 are still on white side of the board and therefore their key squares are only one rank in front of them 
So uh, one one rank separates uh, the key squares from the pawn, and that's important to remember too, that the key squares are not right in front of the pawn, but uh, two ranks in front of the pawn. So e2 has key squares at d4, e4 and f4. The pawn at b4 has key squares on a6, b6, c6. But notice, once we cross over the imaginary um, demarcation line, right, and we go into the enemy territory, then the key squares, amount of key squares double. And we can see this pawn on g5 has key squares now right in front of it and uh, on the next rank. And that's important to remember also. All right, now we're going to get into some examples. All right, so in this extreme example, you have white to move, right? And to some of you that know your end games real good, you know that this is a well-known draw with white to move. With black to move, black um, actually loses the game. Um, because it gets squeezed out of the position. But we're talking about key squares. So in this position, can you find the key squares uh, for white? It's pretty simple. The key squares for white in this position are D8, E8, and C8. And the black king is standing right on D8. So this is why with white to move, this position is a dead draw and a theoretical draw because there is no way that white um, the white king can occupy any of those key squares without losing the d7 pawn there's no way to um, to squeeze the king out so to speak so when white makes the move king d6 then we see black has no moves now, if it were um, black's move, then black would be forced to go to uh, c7, and then white can play e8, excuse me, e7, and then he has, uh, will just promote the pawn. But for purposes of this lesson, he can go to e8. In other words, he would have full access to the um, one of the uh, key squares in the position again in this position uh, this is another um, learning example in this position the key squares for white are b8 c8 and d8 and this time around is black to move and when you understand the, that the uh, key squares are d8 c8 and b8 and you want to keep white out you play the only move available to do that, which is King C8. And now, if um, say White goes to say um, E8, for example, then <coughs> then simply um, Black moves King C7 and attacks the pawn. So after King C8, C7. And again, it's a draw um, because white is forced to move to uh, c6 in order to keep the pawn protected. Now, things get a little tougher. Now, we're looking at um, the game from um, black being the stronger side. And this is um, actually a real, from a real game between player named Jimenez against um, uh, Ivkov and this game was from Havana 1962 now if Ivkov has the black pieces and he's trying to promote the pawn now looking at this position in reverse the key squares for black are b1 c1 excuse me the key squares for black or yes they're b1 c1 and d1 but they're also um, b2 c2 and d2 remember once the pawn crosses into enemy territory he now has six key squares all right so 
black blacks excuse me white's job here in the defense is to keep um black from entering six squares so based on the location of the black the um most likely location that black will try to enter is via d2 now watch the defense here and now again if you know your end games you know your basic um idea is just to keep the opposition but the reason why i'm not mentioning the opposition is because i want you to get the understanding that it's about the key squares once you understand that then the play for the opposition will become quite naturally here Jimenez played king c1 why did he play king c1 because Ivkov cannot gain access to the key squares after that which in this case would be d2 Again, D2, C2, um, B2, and B1, C1, and D1. All right. So, for example, if I they agreed to a draw, by the way, if Ivkov played uh, King D3, then Jimenez just simply gets right in front of the king with D1. Okay, and it would repeat. All right. So here's the idea, king c1, king d3, king d1. No progress can be made to the, in those key squares by uh, black. c2 check, king c1, and then we have that uh, drawn position. Because in this position, um, when the stronger player has to move, then it forces stalemate or loss of the pawn. So hopefully you're getting the hang of these key squares. Here is another um, real life example from Moscow. I think it's the, Mo the Russian Championship 1924 between a player named uh, Nena Rokov and the famous uh, composer Grigoriev. Okay, and here Grigoriev has the white pieces, excuse me, the black pieces, and coming down the board, looking from the top of your screen to the bottom. So obviously, um, Black is trying to promote here. White is trying to stop him. And the question is, um, and it's white to move, by the way. So the question is, can white stop the um, Grigoriev from queening his pawn? Well, the first question you have to ask yourself after that is, to, to answer that question is, well, what are the key squares? The key squares are... Those uh, three pawns, excuse me, those six pawns um, on the second and first ranks in front of the E pawn. So again, just to you know, overemphasize, I know it's very repetitive, but the key squares here are D2, E2, F2, F1, E1, and D1. So <clears throat> all those squares in front of the, um, of the black pawn. Right, six squares in front of the black pawn. So it's white to move. So what can he do? He wants to try to stop uh, Gr Grigoriev from entering um, D D2, E2, F1, D1, and E1, and F1. Now the problem is, it's white to move, and he's already um, going to lose the opposition. The kings are in an unfortunate place for white to be able to draw. <clears throat> so watch what happens. <clears throat> so Nana Rolkov played king c1. And Grigoriev played king c3. This forces um, white to move. Black has the opposition here. King d1. And simply king d3. And this is going to force... This is going to force uh, Nana Rokov to give up the one of those key squares. Okay, I'll show you why. So King D3, and say for example, E1, then E2. And now you can see White would be forced to move to F2, and then this would allow Grigoriev access to D2, one of the um, key squares and you know what that means once you get access to the key squares and now I showed you with King E1 in case black excuse me in case white goes to C1 then 
we just simply um, push the pawn to e2 and then white will win like that or if you wanted to be super technical he gains access to the key square e2 on king c1 let's look at another one okay now this is <clears throat> another example but this time we have um, uh, black to move here and so what does black do to try to um, win the position again recognize the key squares d2 e2 f2 f1 e1 and d1 okay the six pawns in front of uh, excuse me the six squares in front of the black pawn so here you play king d4 a very powerful move the reason why is because white is no longer is not able to maintain opposition by playing the move d king to d2 because the black pawn is covering that square so king c1 and now black takes the opposition and it leads to the position that we just saw and if king d1 again king d3 so the opposition is very important in other words forcing the opponent to move and right? he's forced to move here is another example again talking about the opposition and again the opposition is, is a situation where your opponent um, is is forced to move so like if you have your king in front of his uh, front of his king so for instance you see the king is on a4 right now the white king is on a4 the black king is on uh, a8 now if white's king was on a6 he would be he'd be in direct opposition there's different types of opposition long distance opposition this is the case of long distance opposition there's three ranks uh, separating um, the kings Okay, so that's long distance op opposition. Then you could be um, separated by five or seven uh, squares, which is another um, type of opposition. There's even um, <clears throat> opposition on different um, on, on uh, diagonals. But I didn't want to talk about opposition, but it's hard to avoid. It's hard to avoid when going over these end games. So here, white to move. So he plays king b5. Again, he's trying to promote. So you should by now know what the critical squares are. The critical squares here are b7, c7, d7, and b8, c8, and d8. So it's kind of hard, right, on at first glance. But watch what happens. King b5. King a7, King a5. So there's the opposition now. White uh, forces Black's hand. King a8, King a6. Okay. So we see, see White. Or now we know all White needs to do is be able to get to b7, and he wins this game. So King b8, King b6, King c8. And c7, and again, there's a squeeze. That means black has to vacate the premises. He has to go to d7, and then white just simply moves into b7. If king a8, then he would just play king c7, entering into the critical square. Notice, not push. If you push the pawn here, then you would become victim to a swindle, because then it would be stalemate. If you push c7, you have to enter into the uh, key square here. Okay, and then promote your pawn. Here's another example. Again, the key squares on the 7th and 8th ranks. The uh, six pawns. So, this example is black to move because white to move. <clears throat> white to move would simply 
Um, let's see. Let me make sure. Yeah, this is black to move. Okay. <clears throat> so black to move is trying to stop white from getting to F7 or F8. So king G, G8. And then simply G7. Squeezing black out. And gain access to the key square. So get another one. Same scenario. This time it's white to move. Now it's difficult here because if you just hop in to the um, hop in to F7, then there's the other rules of chess, the stalemate. Okay, so you want to do that. You don't want to. So you hop in the key square there, then you'll be stalemate because black will have no move. So you gotta try to um, figure that figure this one out. It's a little bit more difficult, but again, understanding this key squares is paramount. So king at five king g7 but now the only thing is is now that the black king is free he can stop white from occupying the uh, squares so king g5 so he takes opposition and this is how you play it. king g8 so no matter what um, angle white tries to take to get into the key squares black will always be able to face him so for instance if he takes that way, king h6, then you just follow him. You got the opposition there. If he did f6, then you follow him over there. King f8. So king h6, king h8, and g7. And we already know king g8, king g6. Draw, handshake. the example key squares for here now remember you have to this is a little tricky you got to remember the key squares for uh, rook pawns are different the key squares for the rook pawn or in this case are g7 and g8 and if the we were talking about the a pawn the key squares would be b7 and b8 Right. For white pawn, for black pawn, it would be um, h1, h2, a1, and a2. So here the question is, right? if you're white, can you get your king to g7 or to g8? Now black to move, armed with this knowledge, he plays king g8. He stops that. h7, king h8. And you see no access right no access for white and no win of course white to move you just simply play right there and now you might be getting real technical and say wait a minute but white doesn't have access to the uh, key squares of course he does because after h7 black would have to move so he would have to say go to e7 and then, of course, you would just queen your pawn, but if you wanted to be ultra technical, you can play king to g7, which is one of the critical squares. Here, black to move. So, again, armed with the critical knowledge. I ask you out there, chess people, what are the uh, key squares here? Okay, answer. Key squares. You should be have it figured out by now. The six pawns in front. This excuse me. The, the six squares in front of the pawn, right? Because the pawn is crossed over into enemy territory. Remember that. That's the difference. When the pawn is um, still on your side of the board. So, for instance, if you're white, the pawn is still on the second, third, or fourth rank on your side of the board. There's only three critical squares, and those three critical squares. Or um, uh, two ranks ahead of the pawn itself. So if the pawn is on the second rank, the critical rank, the critical pawns, excuse me, the uh, the key squares are uh, on the fourth rank. Uh, 
If your pawn is on the 4th rank, the key squares will be on the 6th rank, and only 3 of them. But once your pawn crosses into enemy territory, now you have um, 6 key squares in front of the pawn. So here, again, d6, e6, f6, f7, e7, and d7. So black armed with this knowledge has to keep um, white out of these squares. So he plays king e7. e6, king e8. Again, if black, excuse me, if white tries to go to d6. And notice too, I didn't mention this. I mean, um, as the pawn advance, the key squares also advance. So, for instance, in this position, the key squares are um, on the 6th and 7th ranks. Well, once that pawn moves, then the key squares also move up to the 7th and 8th ranks in this case. And here, black easily draws. Again, key squares. I'm going to assume that you already know where they're at. And it's black to move here. It's right in front of the king. Right? E6. And here, there's no way for black to, to stop it because he gets squeezed out. Now he's forced by the rules of chess to go to F7. And then the king goes to E7. So the point of understanding the um, key squares is that you can just glance at the position and basically see if it's a win or not. Right, you should be able to say if white if white to move, you do such and such. If blacks to move, you do such and such. Like right here, for instance, at a quick glance, white to move, I know I'm going to e6 with my king. Okay, I'm not moving the pawn or anything, I'm going to king e6. Because I know where the critical squares are. Black to move, if I'm trying to defend, I know I, if, if black to move, I know I can't defend this. But I don't know that my opponent knows that he can win it. So therefore, I'm going to put up the best defense, would be, which would be to take the opposition, king d8. And then he will have to figure it out. Here's a position white to move, king e6. Okay. So a little less explaining. Here, white to move. King f7. Remember where your critical squares are. <clears throat> King g6. King h6. And black is keeping the opposition. But white can win. White wins here because after King g8. Then just simply g7 and again. Uh, black is squeezed out. Black to move here. And remember, the special case of the rook pawns. Where are the critical squares? In this case, g7. Excuse me, not, I'm sorry, not critical squares. Where are the key squares? g7, h8. So, black is black's move. And can he stop? Stop you. Sure he can. Black to move. He plays king f8. h6. King G8. He just gets in that corner. I'm sure many of you have been frustrated by that many times. Okay. Uh, white to move here. Just simply can play King G7. Just entering into the the uh, critical square. Excuse me, the key square. Okay. Now, here's a funny example right here. And it's black to move. Okay. And I use this example because this this shows the downside of having um outside pass pawns or H H and A pawns specifically. Because you know you often hear, Oh, it's good to have, you know, outside pass pawns and it is because they're far away from the king etc and usually like hard to get to but sometimes 
having these pawns uh, create additional defensive possibilities for 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 uh, the weaker side. You know, stalemating possibility, stalemating tactics. So this position, remember, I told you the critical squares um, for the the flank pawns for the H and A pawns. They only have two critical squares, which are G8. In this case, G8 and uh, G7. Okay? And remember, the key square, I keep saying critical and key squares. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting sleepy. Um, so, G8 and G7 are the, the key squares. Black understands, right? A strong player that understands this concept understands, hey, I can't let this guy get in. You know, these, I can't let white occupy G7 or G8. So what do you play as black? King F7. King H6. And now, you just simply hop right in there. Okay? Simply hop right in there. And there's no way white can win. Same example, right? White plays h6, king f7. See, once you spot those, those, the key squares, then it's easy to formulate your plan. Okay, again, this is um, <coughs> another example here. White say if white's to move, and um, you first want to spot your key uh, squares. In this case, it's black, and we see black's pawn has not uh, crossed over, right, the uh, into the enemy territory. So the key squares for black would be um, e3, f3, and g3. Okay. Let's leave that for now. Okay, so with white to move, king b2, f4, king c2, f3, king d2, f2, king e2. And that's a different video altogether. There's a way, there's a way that you can calculate this at a glance also to see if you can uh, stop the pawn it's called being in the square where you make an imaginary uh, square on the, on the board and then you know that you can uh, step in step into it so white to move you can you can just glance at the board and say okay I can stop that pawn um, if it starts moving now if it's black to move then you will lose because you won't be able to um the, the step in the square so to speak okay now you might be asking well why did why did black try to move the pawn problem is is um here again remember i told i told you about the key squares and that's what we're staying focused on the key squares here for black or e3 F F3 and G3, so it's obvious that um, with white to move, black is black's king is too far away to even get there. So, for instance, after King B2, if King B7, then just simply King C3, and uh, with correct play, there's no way that um, black is going to be able to get his king to um, E3 or F3 or G3. Is another example with white to move. Um, now here, <coughs> the the um, pawn is on the fourth rank, so we know there's only three key squares for the pawn, and those pawn those squares are um, at uh, e6, d6, and c6. So you should be able to glance right away and know that with proper play, black uh, should be able to stop this pawn. King d3, king f5, king c4, 
king e6 and you're like wait a minute I don't know king c c5 can he stop the pawn king d7 uh oh king d5 no there's an opposition you see the, now the king must slide one side to another so that was just to make sure you're on your, your p's and q's okay so but again just that quick glance and say looking at the position and you look at it and say hmm I think I'll try to get I think I can get to c6 if you calculate that you could get to c6 you know you won okay Let's look at it again and this is this move right here after king d3 king f5 that's what kills black because the king d3 the black king can't cut over because the pawn on e4 has e5 under the control and also the king has e4 under control and just that extra tempo right there kills him here's an old example of Roxy and Marshall from night Frank James Marshall founder of the Marshall Chess Club many time United States champion all right this is Marshall the move this is from Monte Carlo 1903 so even back then Marshall understood that the critical square the key squares in this position are f3 g3 and h3 you see now you should be able to glance and know that this is a win for black this is black to move what did Marshall do here what would you do here King g4 and we already know gaining the opposition now the king is forced to move to one side King h2 boom that's it game over King f3 King h3 g4 King h2 King f2 and remember once he moved that pawn the key squares moved also so now that the pawn is in enemy territory there are now six key squares and black is already occupying them anyway king f2 but it's important that the king stay ahead of the pawn because as the pawn advance the key squares advance and the pawn and the king needs to be in those key squares and that's the real um, science behind why the king needs to be in front of the pawn because as the pawn advance the key squares advance and the king needs to be in those squares king h1 and now again you, you got to be careful here because you want to advance the pawn play king g3 king g1 and king h3 was played Roxy resigned here. The idea behind King H3 is that the King H3, King H1, G3, King G1, and then setting up that position where Black gets squeezed out. Okay. Now here is um 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 what do you call these things um like a puzzle or whatever made by uh. uh player named Cyphers and it's white to move and looking at the position we know the key squares are um, F6 G6 and H6 so let's see King F2 King D6 King G3 King E6 King h4, King f6, King h5, g7, and g5. Do I need to go anymore? You should know that it's a win by now. See, he's forced, and he just takes that square. So I think I showed you enough examples. You can see that it's pretty simple.
right? It's not magic. This is the last example, and um, the next the next um, video we will talk about critical squares. I know I made a mistake, you know, a mistake several times because I'm making this video at like two in the morning, and I'm on a Saturday. And um, so I was saying sometimes I'm saying critical squares and key squares. I mean to use the term key squares the whole time for this video, and you'll see why in the next video. It's critical squares is something different, and I might explain the opposition in a little more detail. But these are the building blocks, ladies and gentlemen. Some of you guys, if you know these master these end games, that's great. That means you had that this part down. So you know, move on, start looking at the rook end games and minor piece end games and things like that. But um, this is where you got to start. Okay, now this is the last position. And I'm going to close the video with this. It's black to move. Black to move, right? And this game is from Yugoslavia, 1959. Okay, the player with the white pieces, right? The stronger side is um, uh, Gligorich. Okay, the player with the black pieces, none other than Robert James Fisher, right? American chess champion, 1972. This is young Bobby Fischer, 1959. So it's his move, and we see Gligorich, right, with a pawn on the fourth rank, looking forward to winning the game. What would you do here? If you want, you can pause the video, set it up on your chessboard, and um, figure it out uh, for yourself. Okay, I'll give you a, a second to think about it. All right. Well, again, you're defending. You put yourself in Fisher's shoes. The first question you have to ask is, where are the key squares? And by now, you should know where they're at. That pawn is on the fourth rank. Therefore, there's only three key, three square key squares, and those key squares are on the sixth rank, namely, a6, b6, and c6. So you must ask yourself, how can I stop white? From getting there okay so you already know that you must create a situation where uh, you have the opposition so that when your two kings are uh, directly opposing each other the stronger side has to move that's what Fisher's thinking is I have to create a position where when Gligorich approaches my king that he's he's the one that has to move at the end Okay. Right, Fisher understands how do Fisher is saying how do I keep him from reaching a6, b6, or c6? Okay. If you understood this lesson, the answer is pretty simple. Fisher played king b8. I know some of you didn't get the lesson and you're like, what? <laughs> yes, king b8. Because remember, there's three key squares. So Fisher has to be prepared to stop black, uh, excuse me, stop white from entering any one of those squares. So he has to be as flexible as possible. Right? He had, remember, he has to maintain the opposition. So king b8. And that was it. They, they agreed to a draw. Here's the idea behind it. Okay. So at the king b8. Let's say. King c5 was played. Then simply king c7. Remember. Those, the key squares. c6, b6, a6. So. When black plays king c7. White has to move away. So, for instance, if white was to go to b5, then the king would just follow. So, wherever the white king goes, the black king goes. If he went to b5, where would he go? b7. You see how that works? <laughs> 
if you went to c7 right this is this is an example of of a wrong move and this is how real it gets if fisher played king c7 he would just lose in the opposition right here you see because after now after king c5 Grigorich has the opposition fisher would have to move so for instance if fisher moved to say b8 excuse me b7 then Grigorich would move to b7 that will force Fisher to have to choose a side, and then Grigorich would just move to the other side, and the pawn would get promoted. Again, if King B7 was chosen, that would be a loss by Fisher. Because King B5, King A7, King C6. So... King B8 is the only move, right, that saved Fisher in this position. So, like I said, the end game, knowing, knowing these, um, th and this is what makes these plays great, is because their foundations are so strong. You know, the foundations in the ending is so strong that when they get to these positions, they they're able to draw them with ease. I mean, one glance. Like I can look at these, I can look at king and pawn endings, like these endings, just like that. Now, I mean, I've been doing it for so long. I can look at the, these these endings. Okay, it's a draw. Okay, this a win. You know, just like quick, like a quick glance. And it's once you understand these shortcuts. But I know this video has been long. But um, I hope. Oops, I probably messed that up. I hope that you um got the um. You know the important part of the lesson and i hope every one of you know now knows what key squares are and uh feel confident and then like i said don't just stop at these examples go look at some king and pawn end games and just where one side has a pawn and no pawn on the other side and see if you can fig you know learn for yourself you know and figure out for yourself where the key squares are and things like that and strengthening and strengthening your um you know your skills right there so i hope you like that video um please like and subscribe and i'll talk to you soon